Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today I am going to show you what to do with these bookmatch tops that we made in one of the last videos. Okay, so uh, a while ago I made a video where I showed you all how to make a uh, bookmatch top and uh, in, in the case of the one that I'm holding in my hand now and the one that we used in the video, it's about an eighth of an inch thick. And I alluded to um, the fact that I want to have it be uh, flexible like this one is. And the reason that we want it to be flexible is, a lot of people have already guessed, we want to bend it over the forearm contour of a Stratocaster style body. Now, you could put this on a flat body and then put the contour on there and just have a line that doesn't have flame maple, but, you know, I think it looks classier and sexier if you bend it over the, uh, over the, the contour. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to do that. Now the astute viewer is probably going to go, hey Matt, how's come you're not, you didn't leave the, the, the blank oversized and screw to the outside like you did in previous videos? Well, because I tried that and um, like, a, like a fool I didn't use screws, I used a pneumatic stapler and it didn't work so well and there were some gaps. So I want to show you how to do it with, um, with clamps so that I don't get a bunch of emails saying, hey, I don't have a vacuum bag like sucky out of the air thing. So uh, this is something that you're going to be able to do without a lot of fancy tools. Uh, just going to need a lot of fancy clamps. So the first thing that we want to do, we've got our body is cut out and uh, I have already um, radius the forearm area. Now when you do this, you want to make sure that you have a nice uh, smooth transition, not an angle. You want to have it be nice and smooth and you also want to make sure that it's flat so that your piece bends evenly, your top rather, bends evenly over the contour. So we got that here. Next thing we want to do is lay out the body and we want to rough trim it out. And the reason we want to rough trim it out is, well, <clears throat> we left it like a square here, you can imagine I'd have to get all kinds of crazy clamp action. So we're going to rough cut it out and um, we're going to lay that out now. Get everything all centered up. It's so nice, I traced around it twice. So now we'll go over to the bandsaw and I'll rough cut this out. Now, because I'm going to be stretching this part, uh, I want to I want to leave a little bit more on this side. But you know what, it's, it's not like you got to leave that much extra. Um, so I'll probably leave about a quarter to an eighth inch everywhere else and maybe uh, three-eighths to a half right here. You won't need that much, but it, it's going to be fine, trust me. So let's go over to the bandsaw and trim this guy out. All right, so here's our rough cut hunk of maple. And as you can see, the line here, I left a little bit more right here than I did everywhere else. So now what we want to do is we want to lay this out so that our center lines match up and we're just going to dry clamp this. In fact, you can, you can, I'm going to change the camera angle because you can already see this guy is bending right over our contour exactly right. So um, let's dry clamp this. Okay, so you see what I mean here about how it's already starting to fold? Over there, we don't need to wet that or we don't need to cut uh, slots under here because we're only bending an eighth of an inch of material. Um, so no big deal. That actually looks pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a couple of screws in here like where the neck pocket's going to go and where some pickups and stuff are going to go. And um, that way it'll help just kind of keep everything in place. So I'll do that and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, now I have drawn out the control layout for a standard strap. Since this one will not be getting a pick guard, um, I'm not going to be able to have the luxury of putting my second screw anywhere here. Although I could put it in the, um, um, the where the jack is going to go. That might be a cool idea, but I haven't decided if I want to use this jack yet. What I do know is that I'm going to be putting a bridge pickup. So I'm going to go ahead and put my next uh, indexing screw right here where the bridge pickup goes, even though I'll probably be using a humbucker on this, just because it'll be spot on, so. And again, these screws are only to kind of hold everything while the clamps do the heavy lifting, but, and help me index everything. As you can see now, my top won't move. So, but these guys will actually help kind of sock the, the piece 
to be glued down in the um, in these two areas. So that's cool. Um, anyway, all right. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this other template and we're going to put it on the back and we're going to use it like a clamping call so that we don't ding up the uh, the wood with a bunch of clamping mess. And we'll do something very similar on this side. But because we have this flexy bendy part here, um, we'll need something that will either flex and bend or we'll need something that goes from, you know, here to here and then another piece that goes right here. So let's see what that looks like. So here's an actual uh, strap template, um, but it won't flex right here, even though it's very thin masonite. The masonite is, is pretty pretty rigid. What we could do is we could hack it up, but then I would have a, you know, a hacked up template. So what I will probably do instead is I'll make some clamping calls that go around here, and I'm gonna do that now, and then I'm gonna show you what that looks like when we come back. Okay, so I made a clamping call for the top out of some, um, some three-quarter plywood that I had around, and as you can see, I cut it off where the uh, where the bendy part is going to be, and I saved the extra stuff, and we can use that as a clamping call for the the bendy bit. So um, now all that's left to do is smear a bunch of glue on everything and put a boatload of clamps on everything. So um, I'm going to assemble all of my stuff that I need, and when we come back, I'm going to do that for you while you watch. All right, so I have everything we need. I have some original tight bond. That's the only real glue that we use here. I've got a weenie roller because I want everything to be nice and smooth. I want an even coat on everything. Um, I'm all ready to go with my uh, clamping calls and I've got clamps all over the place. Now, um, again, guys, I know that uh, this is probably not the best technique for doing this because you know, uh, the, there, there are other ways that are, that are far superior, like uh, vacuum sealing this, you know, like with a vacuum clamp and just sucking all the air out of it. There's a handful of videos out there about that. And uh, maybe in one of our future videos, I will show you how we do that. But, you know, uh, I was looking on YouTube and I'm like, hey, there's not a whole lot of, what do you do if you don't have this, uh, you know, $80 worth of vacuum bag and clamps and stuff. And by the way, $80 worth of vacuum bag is um, probably not very much vacuum bag at, at this stage of the game. Uh, you can go to Harbor Freight and buy a bunch of clamps for, you know, that, 80, that same $80 and then you can use them for other stuff too. So I would say if you're just getting started and you don't know you know, how many of these kinds of tops you're going to do. You might just want to clamp them on first and, and see what uh, see what that's like and see what sort of results you can get because, you know, you can get some really, really excellent results and then you will be so smart that you will be building it yourself and you'll make videos with an exciting catchphrase like that. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so it's really, really hot here at the uh, at the shop today. It's probably it's probably about about 90 something. So this glue is going to set up fast. Um, the weenie roller is one of those things you don't have to use a weenie roller. By the way, I'm off camera rolling um, glue on the actual piece of maple right now, and I'm talking and I'm trying to do 18 things at once. And because I don't have a cameraman, I'm my own cameraman today, there's going to be a handful of things that just sort of get done weird. So, there we go. Um, we do have to act fast because, um, like I say, the glue is going to set up pretty quick. All right. And we're going to take advantage of... Um, our uh, holes that we pre-drilled here and that's cool um, we do want to get rid of this excess glue that's on here because what's going to happen is it's going to stick down to the uh, to the clamping call okay so here we go whirlwind clamping action and we're not worried about um, you know the uh, uh, 
the clamps marring the finish because we're on clamping calls on the top and the bottom. But this is going to be a really heavy thing once it's all uh, uh, said and done. Um, if you uh, if you've seen my videos on using screws instead of clamps, this would probably be a great time to um, to use that technique. But unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of doing that because I already goofed this up one time um, using using staples instead of um, instead of screws. Uh, hoping that it would work and save myself a little bit of time. But you know, sometimes you just gotta experiment and try new stuff. So the nice thing about having a solid clamping call on the, the top and the bottom is we're distributing the um, the pressure of these clamps evenly across the whole the whole instrument. So that should should uh, yield a, a really tight seam. If you're not going to bind this, you um, you want to have a really good. You know, if you are going to bind this, you want to have a good seam because um, that's just that's just quality work right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, but sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes you can cover up uh, some errors with binding. Uh, I'm not suggesting that anyone who is a great big company has ever done that, but maybe they have. All right, this is getting crazy clamp action everywhere. And it looks, actually it looks really good. There's a nice, nice amount of squeeze out all the way around. And uh, this has got to be a really boring video for you guys to watch me clamp things. But here we are. And uh, okay, so that's everything that's flat. Now we're going to bend this bendy bit. And uh, I'm going to use this leftover hunk here. We're going, to, we're going to use it exactly like we did the other clamping ball, only it's going to flex a little bit. And that's going to be cool. And go all the way around with our clamps. We're going to clamp it, Jed. That looks pretty decent, y'all. And as you're doing this, you know, go around and uh, make sure you got squeeze out all the way around. And then if you got some places where you don't, you know, readjust your clamps, add another clamp, you know, stuff like that. Because now it's like the only time you got to do that. I'm going to put some other clamps going the other direction here because I'm running out of, uh, I'm running out of space to do this. And this glue is already setting up. Yeah. All right, that looks pretty decent. Pretty decent. All right, so as you can see, we got a whole boatload of clamps on this thing, and that's what it looks like. But uh, got nice... Nice squeeze out everywhere. And once we get this dude, all the excess cut off, it'll be cool. So I'm gonna come out in the morning and pull these clamps off and we'll wrap up the video. Okay, it is the next morning and I got my coffee mug here. Sully would be proud. I pulled all the clamps off of um, the guitar body and here it is. Look, I even pulled the uh, little screws out of there for you. So now, the only thing that's left to do, uh, as far as this video is concerned, is to trim off this excess here. And I'll start doing that on the bandsaw, and I'll finish it up on the router table. So uh, that should just about wrap it up. As you can see, everything looks pretty cool now. Um, uh, we got everything buzzed out. There might be a few areas where some glue like ran down the, uh, uh, the side here that we need to tidy up on the drum sander, but no big deal. This thing looks cool. Now all I gotta do is figure out what I want to actually have go in here. Um, we had so much fun making that double neck that I think this would be a cool project to do a super strat, you know? Um, throwback style. Think what I might do, put the uh, genuine article Floyd Rose, a couple of humbuckers, maybe round the neck pocket over like we did on uh, on Jim's double neck and actually set the neck. Um, hockey stick headstock, you know, something cool like that because I've, I've always liked guitars like that and this would be a cool guitar project to do that too. Um, so if you guys have any questions about what we did today, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have any ideas about what you think this guitar ought to be when it's all said and done, leave those in the comment section below too. Uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe as usual. And uh, if you like content like this, you might want to consider going over and checking out our Patreon page. Um, you know, for a buck a month, you can become a member and it really helps us out bringing the videos that we bring to you guys. If you can't do it, we totally get it. Um, what you can do above and beyond that that really is helpful is share this video as many places as you can. Um, we've gotten a lot of new subs lately and I think it's because you guys are sharing the videos and, uh, and you know, getting them out there for us. So thanks very much for everybody who's helping us with that. Thanks to our Patreon members and thanks to everybody who's commenting. All right, I think we got all that stuff wrapped up. This is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody.